Service National Diagnostic Service was commissioned and established in 2009 for the genetically defined types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It is based at two centres, Sheffield and London. In the Sheffield Service, we have evaluated several thousand families over the last 14 years. Genetic testing for all known EDS types is performed in our laboratory in Sheffield. All patients have been seen by either myself or my colleague, Dr. Diana Johnson, consultant clinical geneticist, and indeed often by both of us. These patients are also cared for by our EDS specialist genetic counsellors, Jess Bowen, Claire Green, and Tammy Cameron. You will hear more from them in the patient session tomorrow afternoon. We look after approximately 230 people with vascular EDS, together with our expert colleagues in cardiology, Professor Nigel Wielden and Dr. Oliver Watson. The events team have shared with you a copy of our recent publication, first author Jess Bowen, detailing our patients with vascular EDS and our management strategy, which includes confirmed efficacy of medical treatment with losartan and bisoprolol. Patients with vascular EDS are seen annually for MRA scans from the circle of Willis to the leg and also clinical review. We also carefully advise on all medical and surgical treatments in our patient group to optimize outcomes. Today, I'm going to talk about our management of pregnancy and delivery in vascular EDS. The details of our management strategy are in the supplementary material for our paper. These have been sent to you by the Society. This was also presented as a poster by Jess Bowen at the EDS meeting in Rome last year. The paper also details obstetric complications in patients who were not under our care at the time of their pregnancy and delivery, but are now. Bleeding and tearing at delivery were common and life-threatening or fatal events were documented in five of these 48 women. One of our patients gave a history of an iliac artery dissection nine days after delivery of her second child, followed by a bowel perforation six days later, which led to a prolonged period with an open abdomen in the intestinal failure unit. Her abdomen was closed by the time she was referred to us. We continue to look after her and her adult son today. Development of a safe management strategy for women with vascular EDS is clearly of paramount importance. For our team, on a personal level, we look after children with vascular EDS who never got to know their mothers, who sadly died during or soon after delivery. In the case of one young man, his mother died in labor and he was born by posthumous caesarean section, having inherited vascular EDS and also suffering the effects of oxygen deprivation. This compelling narrative urges us on to develop careful management strategies and we are very much part of the team planning delivery of our patients together with their local teams as it is preferable for maternity services to be close to home. We have been involved in the successful management of 12 pregnancies in women with vascular EDS. These pregnancies were closely managed by a specialist obstetric team in a tertiary unit with multidisciplinary involvement, including obstetrics, anesthetics, vascular surgery, clinical genetics, cardiology, including our cardiologist with special knowledge of vascular EDS and also input from our EDS specialist service. Losartan is not given when planning or during pregnancy, but bisoprolol is continued. And once the pregnancy is confirmed, recent scans are reviewed and repeated if indicated. Early elective cesarean section with delivery at 34 to 35 weeks balances the risks to the baby of early delivery with the risks of spontaneous labor for the mother. There is an increased chance of premature birth for babies with vascular EDS and an increase in premature rupture of membranes for mothers with vascular EDS. 
antenatal steroid administration for fetal lung maturation is recommended between 24 hours and seven days prior to delivery. An obstetric anesthetic assessment should take place in the antenatal period. A specialist obstetric anesthetist is required for delivery and the method of anesthesia needs to be carefully considered. So far, all of our patients have been delivered under general anesthetic. A vascular surgeon with appropriate surgical equipment should be available in theater for immediate expert repair of vessels if needed. In Sheffield, our protocol is that the vascular surgeon is scrubbed in as first assistant to the obstetrician. Protocolized management of massive obstetric hemorrhage should be readily accessible. As well as cross-matched blood, the use of cell salvage and bedside monitoring of clotting function to guide blood product administration and fibrinogen concentrate is recommended. This has been available but has not been needed in our patients so far. Parents may wish to have cord blood stored at birth to allow genetic testing at a later date. It is helpful to have a request form completed for the parents to hand over before delivery. Some women with vascular EDS may wish to consider the option of having a tubal ligation at the time of delivery. Other contraceptive options are also discussed. Although it is possible to fit a coil under direct vision at the time of section, subsequent replacement carries a risk as it is not performed then under direct vision and there is an increased risk of uterine perforation or coil migration. Plans are made for the mother to be observed in the obstetric high dependency unit or critical care unit overnight with the team aware of the implications of the vascular EDS diagnosis. Consideration of extending the postnatal stay in hospital is relevant as vessel dissection and rupture in the mother are reported also in the postnatal period. The neonate of it course is at 50% risk of having vascular EDS and the neonatal team needs to be aware of the risk of potential complications in an affected neonate. We stress that it is not possible to make a confident clinical diagnosis of vascular EDS in a neonate. We mentioned the fact that talipes is seen more commonly in babies with vascular EDS. There are also cases of pneumothorax reported in the early neonatal period if the baby is affected. With this careful management plan, deliveries have run smoothly for our patients. Women are continued on bisoprolol and a repeat MRA is planned for three months postpartum. We are keen to use our knowledge and experience to work with colleagues to develop a management strategy for pregnancy and delivery in women with vascular EDS, which is both safe and transferable between units and countries. And we look further forward to further discussion here today. Thank you.